Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here, and I'm super excited for today's video because I finally get to showcase one of the most oppressive PvP Sorcerer builds that has ever existed in Diablo 4, and the best thing about it is that it's taken a build that most of you guys already have, the iShard PvE build. I think there's a statistic that says like 60% of players use that build. Well, I just adapted it for PvP, and it is an absolute beast. The best part about the entire build is that your opponents spend more time CC'd and frozen than actually attacking you, just allowing you to well on them constantly. This is a monster of a class when it comes to 1vxing, so without further ado guys, let's hop into the build video. Alright, so before we hop into the build video itself, I'll let you guys know I do have a written guide on my channel. Um, there's a link down in the description below, so if you guys don't want to listen to me yak, you can just go click on the link. It has pretty much everything I'm running here. Also, another disclaimer, I'm doing this with 135 Paragon points, so I do not have the 200 cap. When I do actually hit that 200 cap, the Paragon board will change, and then once it changes, I will update it on the website. All right, so to start off the skill tree, you're just gonna put two filler points in into your basic attacks. We're not gonna be using this for literally anything. Now you wanna max out eye shards. You wanna go with the second one, enhance eye shards. And then for the third and more, if you wanna go with greater eye shards, the reason you want to go with this, well, for one, we are always gonna have a barrier active. If you do not have a barrier active, you're on pop like a zit, okay? And we have so many sources of vulnerable when you compare it to destructive eye shards that this is just completely wasted. So we are going with the greater eye shard just because all of your frozen targets are going to take a lot more damage from our passives. Now, moving on down the tree, you'll want to uh, put one point into ice armor enhanced ice armor and also shimmering ice armor so enemies that you hit while your ice armor is active has a 15 percent chance to actually freeze your target for 3.93 seconds this is just one of many ways we're gonna end up freezing your opponents all right so next you want one point into teleport one point into enhanced teleport and then you want shimmering teleport which is going to give you the 30% damage reduction for three seconds. So you'll want to definitely max out Frost Nova to lower the cooldown as much as possible. You'll go with Enhanced Frost Nova, and then for the third morph, you'll go with Mystical Frost Nova. This is going to apply vulnerability to all the targets hit by Frost Nova, and we are proccing Frost Nova a lot with our class enchantments, as well as our double chargers of Frost Nova, which we will go over here in a moment, okay? We have so many sources of vulnerability on the build, and when we actually get over into the gear section of this, you want to stack a lot of vulnerability damage if you can i don't have the rules for it but uh, i mean it is what it is all right passives definitely go with all glass cannon i get two points into elemental attunement uh, there's actually one extra filler point here you can kind of put where you want i just went ahead and slapped into elemental attunement it's not the end of the world so next when it comes to your conjuration skills you're going to max out ice blades this is an incredibly slept on ability this hits like a truck it's used to proc one of our enchantments and this this is the bread and butter of the build not gonna lie to you we even have a whole paragon board dedicated to just this ability alone okay you're going to invent enhance ice blades and then you want summon ice blades 20 percent of the ice blades cooldown reduction also applies to other skills that's very very important when it comes to the passives you want align the elements obviously and then you want three ranks of protection next mastery we don't want anything from here the only thing you want is icy veil and then snap freeze lucky hit frost skills have a chance a nine percent chance to instantly freeze your target see another instance of freeze okay there, there's more to come so you got frost nova you got the passive you have this passive we're gonna have gear that freezes we will have aspects of freezes it's crazy all right going on down the list you'll definitely want to take deep freeze into deep prime freeze and then supreme supreme deep freeze this sounds like a pizza not gonna lie to you guys you want to take all these passives okay i actually have six points in the hoarfrost if you're lucky like me and you get an amulet with a plus three this is super good to have all right now last you want to not use avalanche you definitely want to go with shatter because we have like four i think five ways of possibly freezing your opponent and having that 25 percent extra damage at the tail end of the freeze duration is insane all right so hopping over into the gear itself and while you're here guys don't forget to like and sub we are going to be pumping out so much diablo 4 content primarily pvp but we will be tossing on some guides here and there in pve as well i will be doing all the classes so if you want to be notified and kept up to date on the best pvp builds possible for diablo 4 you know what to do all right, so when it comes to the gear, there are some ideal traits that you will definitely want to have on your gear. Take a screenshot of this because it's going to be very, very important. Some of the gear that I have are unique, so some people may not have access to some of the uniques. You may have gotten unlucky and it hasn't dropped. So these are the ideal traits that I would run on my gear if I could. Now, these are not the traits that I have currently on my gear because, you know, I'm not RNG Jesus and I can't get the drops I need. But if you want to min-max this as much as possible, this is how I want to lay it out. 
All right, so before I start going over all the aspects on the gear, again, the traits that I have are not ideal. Definitely take a look at the website. Those will be the ideal ones. So it's important to note that your crit damage is capped at 100%, and by a baseline, you have 50% extra crit damage. So crit damage against players can only go up to 100%. So we take a look at our offensive stats here. My critical strike damage is sitting at a very comfortable 101.7. Yeah, 1.7% of that is wasted, but yeah, who cares? You know, it's... It's, it's whatever so what i want you guys to pay attention to primarily are the aspects i have on the gear because i do believe that these are best in slot when it comes to our helmet we are running the deep freeze aspect so essentially when you pop your ultimate you're going to get a full reset you're going to reduce all the cooldowns of everything because of the intrinsic effect of deep freeze because that's what it does right you're gonna go in blow your load blah 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 pop deep freeze it's going to take a lot of time off the cooldown so you can do your engine again so this aspect is going to allow you to get up to 100 health and 100 magic so you can go in for your another round of rotations an absolute must have in my opinion because potions are very limited potion effectiveness sucks let's be real and for whatever reason the rogue poisons bypasses your health and the the damage mitigation you can take a look here on the uh, pvp damage mitigation damage reduction for whatever reason the rogues poison trap uh bypasses this and uh you pretty much die uh, very quickly if you step in one so god rest your soul if you do so just pay attention where you're walking anyway so this is going to be a, a nice aspect to have to kind of reset the fight in case you get jumped by a few people you saw at the beginning of the the uh the video there i actually had two or three people jump me and there's all partied up too it's pretty funny <laughs> we don't have a massive killing spree but anyway so moving on into our chest piece um casting we're using the snow veiled arcan armor so this is a snow veiled aspect is going to when you cast ice armor it is going to give you unstoppable for ideally three seconds i've yet to get a one i've probably deleted by now but uh it'll give you unstoppable for two seconds ideally you want three you have to have this if you do not have a source of crowd control break free you're going to get stun locked and you're just completely screwed so we do have multiple multiple ways of getting this unstoppable perk and this is just going to really help out whenever you're casting ice army which you will be like like every four or five seconds anyway it is going to give you that immunity to cc and crowd control so it's absolute must have gotta have it Next, so this is a unique item um, that I have on the build. If you don't have Frostburn, I mean, it is really nice to have. These are some of the best PvP gauntlets you can have. If you don't have it, that's okay. That just means your gloves will have access to an extra offensive aspect, which isn't too bad. So Frostburn, um, what's very special about this is that on lucky hit chance, we have a 24% chance to actually freeze your enemy for, for two seconds. Again, adding to what I stated at the beginning of the video, your opponents spend more time frozen than actually fighting you. And I, that's a true statement by the way like they're either frozen or dead okay so frostborn is really really good um also the changes um if you do get gloves i highly suggest you get gloves with attack speed um even though we're not using a weapon we're just using abilities that attack speed applies to everything like your, your global cooldowns literally everything so i think you can get a a, a nice pair of gloves that has approximately uh, like at 20 uh, uh, this one's 15 percent uh, extra attack speed that would be huge if you get the gloves so if you don't have frost burn just slot those instead uh, next is the uh, frost blitz aspect so what this is going to do is going to give you an extra charge of frost snow but it's going to increase the cooldown by 39 percent well 40 percent at max 30 percent low on the low end this is debatable but i swear by this having two charges of frost nova because what will happen is you'll blink in you'll stun cc them with the frost nova and they'll immediately pop their unstoppable and then th then you're kind of in a bad spot well this allows you to just as soon as their unstoppable runs out to pop it again and freeze them so unless they have a secondary unstoppable effect they're pretty screwed as well all right so penitent greaves everyone can get this this is like a world you know, like, like a universal um unique uh, is very very strong on the sorcerer so um the unique effect is you leave behind a trail of frost that chills enemies uh, and you deal 10 percent increased damage to uh to chilled enemies um this is really good because when you do your evade this gives you 75 percent increased movement speed which is absolutely massive and the fact that you have these chilled effects all over the ground it makes it very hard for people to like stay up on you you're really annoying to deal with like, i i i've gotten so many messages you're so annoying to get up on man <laughs> it's such a fun trolley class all right so when it comes to the weapons we're running a frozen tundra aspect on this so while deep freeze is active exploding spikes form around the area this does a lot of damage so even when you're in your ultimate even though it is a defensive reset ultimate you actually deal a huge amount of damage if people do not get away on your screen this is literally screen wide a huge aoe so if they want to fight you in 
uh, as soon as you come out of your ultimate by all means and they're going to take a lot of damage doing so this is an absolutely amazing aspect to have moving over into the amulet so the amulet i think ideally you will want defensive skills i think you can get a plus three conjuration skills do not quote me on that i got a plus three horror frost um the amulet is pretty important for the passives uh, excuse me for the skills because the more ranks you have in the skills the further it decreases the cooldown and this build is pretty much about decreasing your cooldowns on this one aspect we have critical strikes with core skill abilities increase your attack speed by 36 percent this is huge 36 percent so even though this does not give you damage like raw damage this is going to allow you to pump out a lot more damage per second because it increases your pretty much your cast speed by 36 percent so at any point when your opponent is frozen you're just gonna be able to chunk them with frost shards like you just completely pepper them i think this is one of the best aspects to have and i put it on the amulet because you get a 50 percent increase in effect for having on the amulet so that guy's there now Next is the control aspect. You deal more damage to immobilized, stun, or frozen enemies. So pretty much your enemies are always quote unquote considered frozen because of the frost shard skill line that we went with at the beginning of the video here. So I'd take a look just to reiterate. So greater ice shards while you have a very active cast of ice shards treat enemies as if they were frozen. So again, we have like four sources to freeze your opponent on this build. This is an absolute must have. When it comes to our second ring, we're using Biting Cold. When you freeze an enemy, there is a 35% chance that they become vulnerable for three seconds. Again, it is very rare that your opponent is not vulnerable. So when it comes to stacking your buckets, stacking your damage, prioritize crit damage up to 100%, get vulnerable damage, get core skill damage, and then get cold or chilled increased damage if you can, along with crit chance. Lucky hit's always good because lucky hit's gonna help your frost, your frost burn, gauntlets proc freezing effects as well. So. Uh, just keep that in mind. And then last but not least, we do have the Frozen Wake aspect on our offhand. So while Ice Armor is active, you leave behind exploding Ice Shards that deal 849. This is on the low end, unfortunately. Damage and, and your Ice Spikes chill enemies for 10%. Now this is really, really handy because you're always going to have your Ice Armor up. And this is just a lot of added benefit. And the good thing about this is if you pop an Ice Armor and then go into your ultimate, it actually persists through your ultimate as well, which is really, really strong. Uh, when it comes to socketing wise, I always go with rubies on the armor pieces. Uh, definitely go with the green boys, the emeralds for your weapons, and then for your jewelry, pretty much always go skulls. So let's kind of take a look at the enchantments. This is very important. I would not deviate from this all too much. So the very first enchantment I want to take a look at is your Frost Nova enchantment. So as the tooltip reads, lucky hit, your conjuration skills have a 30% chance to unleash a Frost Nova when hitting enemies. You guys know Frost Nova is going to apply the vulnerability stats effect, and it's also going to freeze your opponent in place okay so we take a look at ice blades for example ice blades actually has a 100 percent chance to lucky hit so effectively you have like a one in three chance when this hits to proc frost nova it is incredible and you can have multiple of these up at a time if you take a look at the damage it actually does hellacious damage like 4,000 average per swipe and then we go take a look at uh, ice shards right so the entire burst of ice shards is in for like you know less than 4k right so this is a very very strong ability to have and you can have multiple of them this is i think this needs tuned down a little bit for pvp but i don't think the devs will be balancing pvp for a very long time so i uh, use it while you can now when it comes to the next enchantment this is kind of a, a, a toss-up i'm going with the ice shards enchantment so essentially Ice shards automatically conjure and fly towards frozen enemies. You are going to be freezing people constantly. And the best thing about it is it, it auto tracks them. You don't have to cast anything. You don't have to do absolutely anything. It's just free damage all the time. And now alternatively, what you could do instead of rocking ice shards enchantment, you could potentially run the ice blades enchantment. So it reads for every 40 seconds worth of cooldowns you spend, you spawn an extra ice blade at random. And again, the ice blades passives are actually really, really strong. So the more ice blades you can possibly have is going to feed into your cooldown reduction and you're going to be able to chain your abilities back to back to back nonstop. So that is also another alternative if you guys want to play around with that. All right, so let's hop over into the Paragon tree. Now, at the time of making this video, I only have 135 Paragon points. It didn't really seem to matter. The clips you guys saw at the beginning was in a PVE Paragon board. I didn't go through and make the Paragon boards compatible for PVP, and it still slapped like pancakes. All right, so 
Um, once I do finally get to the upper echelons of 200 Paragon points, I will update the build guide in the link I provided to you guys down in the description. So when I get to that point, I will make a community post or I'll hit you guys up in the Discord and say, hey, you know, here's the updated build and you'll have at it. Or if you want to experiment with it, you most definitely can. But this is what I found to be the most optimal path for me right now at 135 Paragon points. So essentially your first glyph you'll just come through this little area i'm not going to go through all of these because it's going to take forever your first glyph you want to go with is going to be the elementalist in your starter board when you get into uh the next board this is the ice the uh the ice fall board okay always get the uh, the polar rhyme node uh, the glyph that you want to use is winter i do not have this leveled up to level 15 to increase its size once i get this leveled up to level 15 in size you'll get the bonuses but as of right now i'm not really getting anything from this but i will i'm gonna try to grind that out later on today i went up to the frigid node this is really nice because everyone's gonna be chilled this is going to give you another 12 percent you know damage mitigation another six percent you know from chilled enemies i went over to recuperate now recuperate is actually not ba that bad since your potions have a cooldown so it's important to get the most healing possible from them it's not a bad node to have as you're picking it up now uh cryomancy is an absolute must this is like most of the damage to be honest with you um i'm not worrying about ice fall if you have the points for asphalt by all means uh, you can actually kill mobs and get barriers you know say if you're one bxing you know you're fighting someone and, and a group of mobs is in the middle of that if you kill any of them and frozen you actually do get a shield or whatever this is okay to have if you got the points for it but i didn't feel that i needed any more defensive capabilities on the build so as of right now i'm not opting for it but once you start getting into the later paragon you know points you definitely go back and grab this as well there's no reason not you only need like seven paragon points to grab this so you might as well so going on into the next board, I believe this is the Elemental Summoner board. Now this is why your blades hit so hard. So you'll want the, the Reservoir node. I don't have enough points for the willpower, but over time you will get enough for this. I went with the Swift Conjure, which is going to increase the damage of Ice Blades by 15% as well as your own attack speed. Conjuration skill damage as well. I'm going with this Conjurer node. This is a lot of extra damage that's completely free. Another thing to note, your Ice Blades are untargetable, so they, there's nothing they can do about it. They just gotta sit there and take it, right? So they're dodging you, they're dodging the freezes, they're dodging the chill, they're dodging the Ice Armor. It, it, it's, it's so oppressive. And when it comes to the Glyph, definitely go with the Conjurer for obvious reasons. A 21% increase to your Conjuration skill damage, okay? And then last but not least, you want the Elemental Summoner node. Your Conjuration skills have a five, percent reduced cooldown man cost per conjuration skill you have equipped i really hope you enjoyed today's video guys please please do not forget to like and sub we are going to be pumping out the diablo 4 content so if you guys want to be around for that you know what to do all right i do have a hot tub stream coming up yes i did eso before doing diablo content i promised my viewers that i would do a hot tub stream with this video got a lot of likes and i'm gonna kind of do the same thing on this one if i can get this video to 200 likes okay just 200 just 200 on this video i will wax my legs on stream i'm not even kidding so just 200 likes that's all that's all I ask, guys. Please, 200 likes. But uh, listen, uh, with all that being said, guys, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members. You guys are absolutely amazing. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Um, I'm super excited to be producing Diablo 4 content. This is a really good game, and I'm just really excited to see you know how it goes. So uh, yeah, this has been Horcrux, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the build. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments or hit me up in the Discord. The link is down in the description, and I will see you guys later. Peace.